Newton's second law states that the resultant force on an object is directly proportional to the product of its mass and acceleration. Product here means multiplying to them together. So as an equation, it says F equals ma, where F isn't just any force, but it's the resultant force. For example, in this scenario here, we'd have to work out the resultant force, which we know is going to be towards the right. So if I write F equals ma, instead of F, I'm going to write the resultant force, which I know is going to be 4,200 4, minus 400 equals the mass, which is given, 1, 2, 0, 0, times acceleration, which I don't know. Okay, so the result was 3800. Zero, zero. I'm going to divide that by 1200 the mass to give me the acceleration, which is 3.2 meters per second squared. A skydiver with a mass of 70 kilograms is falling. The air resistance acting on him is 500 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the skydiver. So we've got his weight, which is going to be the biggest force here, mg, acting downwards. The drag force isn't going to be as big because we know he's accelerating downwards. So that's 500 newtons upwards. So F equals ma. F is the result of force. So mg is bigger. So I'm going to be 70 times 9.81, which is mg. I'm going to subtract the force in the opposite direction, which is the drag force here, equals uh, the mass times the unknown acceleration, which we're trying to find. So that's 686.7 minus 500. And then divide that by 70 to get the a so yep a equals and this gives us 2.7 meters per second squared during the liftoff of a 75,000 kilogram rocket an average air resistance of 80,000 newtons acts on the rocket calculate the thrust force required to give the rocket an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared so we know the thrust is going to be the biggest here, biggest force, because we know it's accelerating. We're going to call that X here. Then we've got the weight of the rocket itself. So we can't forget that. So mg. And then we've got air resistance, which is going to be acting the opposite direction to motion. So that's going to be downwards as well, which is 80,000 newtons. So F equals ma. So the result of force upwards. So I'm going to say X, and then we'll subtract the other force which are in the opposite direction, which is mg 75,000 times 9.81. And I'm going to subtract the drag force equals the mass of the object times the acceleration, which we know is 5. Okay, so if I bring all, all the negative numbers to the other side, I get 70, uh, that's 37500. Zero, zero. Zero, that's the mass times acceleration, plus 8,000 plus uh, the weight of the object, which is 735750. That gives me a thrust upwards of 1190750. We can, as you can see, this is obviously the biggest force. Okay, write an equation for the normal reaction force on the person for each of the situations. Moving upwards at a constant velocity. Well, in that case, we know the resultant force has to be zero because they're moving at constant velocity. In fact, it's the same as if they were at rest. The normal reaction force and her weight must be balanced. So N is equal to mg. The normal reaction force is what we perceive to be our weight. So right now, when you're not accelerating, as you're sitting watching this video, what you perceive to be a weight is just your normal reaction force. Some situations, the normal reaction force can change. So for example, when you accelerate upwards, okay, so it doesn't matter that the person's accelerating from rest, is you know we know that she's accelerating upwards, so we know the normal reaction force is bigger than weight. So in this case, if I use Newton's second law, F equals MA, the result force, the big N minus MG equals MA. So we know that if we bring mg to the other side, n is equal to mg plus ma. So now we've added something extra on at the ma part. So now your normal reaction force is bigger. So this in this scenario, because you're accelerating upwards, you'd actually feel heavier because the normal reaction force is bigger. Of course, your weight hasn't changed because your mass hasn't changed and the gravitational field strength hasn't changed. 
but because you're acting upwards, the normal reaction force is bigger and you feel heavier. Okay, let's look at this situation. Moving up upwards, but decelerating. The fact that she's moving upwards doesn't really matter. We know she's slowing down while she's going upwards, so we know that the weight, which hasn't changed, mg, but we know the normal reaction force is actually smaller than usual. Okay, because now the result of force is downwards. Because it has to be downwards, because we know that her accelerating upwards is the same as sorry, her decelerating is the same as her accelerating downwards. So mg f equals ma. The result of force downwards, mg minus n equals ma. So if I bring n to the other side and ma to back towards the left hand side, you get n is equal to mg minus ma. So it's actually the normal reaction force is smaller than usual, so you feel lighter okay, as you decelerate. Moving downwards and accelerating, so it's the same as before. She's basically accelerating downwards. So in this case, same, exactly the same as part C. Mg is bigger. Well, it's the same, but actually it's just the normal reaction force is smaller. So Mg minus N equals Ma. So we get n is equal to mg minus ma. So this is when you feel a bit lighter, as if you're almost losing contact. And of course, if the, if the rope breaks uh, and she starts, the lift starts to accelerate downwards, you just feel weightless, in which case uh, the floor isn't being pushing on you, n becomes zero. Okay, in this question, we have two objects, a truck which is pulling the trailer behind it. So we need to be careful not to get mixed up between the two objects. The resistive force on the trailer is 700 newtons. So that's this way, opposite to the direction in which the trailer is going. And the resistive force on the truck is 500 newtons. That's this way. We need to find the driving force on the truck. So that's going to be pushing it forward. So I'm going to, it's going to be quite big as well. So I'm going to call that X. And the tension drawbar. The tension drawbar is actually going to push, pull, sorry, the truck backwards. Okay, it's going to pull the truck backwards. It's like almost being pulled down, pulled back by the trailer. But it's going to pull the trailer forwards. It's the same tension in this case. Okay, because there's two unknowns with the truck, I'm going to start with the trailer. So I'm going to write Newton's second law, apply it to the trailer. So um, the result of force we know is going to be in the, towards the right. So tension is going to be bigger than the 700 newton force. And that's going to equal its mass, 2700 zero, zero of the truck times acceleration of the truck, which is, in this case, bo they both have the same acceleration. Okay, otherwise, the drawbar would either snap or come loose. Okay, so tension in this case, if you solve this carefully, you get 21760 newtons. Now that I have this tension, I can use it in this in the for the truck. I'm gonna write F equals MA for this one as well. So the result of what's gonna be X minus the tension minus the 500 is gonna equal its mass times acceleration. Okay, so tension I know in this case, so that's gonna be X. I'm gonna bring the tension and the 500 to the other side, so this becomes um, 8500 times 0 0.78 plus the tension, which is 21760, plus the 500, that gives me 28890 newtons of driving force.